this is a slide I showed at the end of the previous video where we calculated our average speed um, in a car moving along a highway. And I, I want to talk about this in a little more detail before we actually do a chemistry example. Uh, to calculate the speed in this example up here, what we did was we calculated the change in distance and divided it by how much time went by, which is also called a change in time. And those Greek letter deltas mean change. Um, I want to do this in a little more detail. The, the convention when you do changes like this is you do what's called distance final. In other words, you take your final number and you subtract it away from your beginning number, or I'm going to call it the initial number. So the, the delta distance is always going to be what our distance was at the end of our measurement minus what our distance was at the beginning of our measurement. And the same thing when we you calculate delta time. That is the time final minus the time initial. So um, this is the convention. This is pretty much how it's done whenever you're calculating some kind of change. You take the final number and subtract it away from the initial number. And so keep that in mind as we do the next problem on the next slide. So this is a more chemistry related example, but we're going to describe a rate. We're not going to describe a rate with numbers. We're just going to describe the idea of the rate of this reaction. So it doesn't really matter what this reaction is, but this is a balanced equation. We have uh, one N2 molecule mixed with one O2 molecule, and it produces two of these molecules with the formula of NO. This is not, not that it really matters, but this is called nitric oxide. It's an important molecule in your body. We're going to describe the speed of this reaction in general terms. And again, it's important to realize that this equation is balanced. There's one of these, one O2, and it produces two nitric oxide molecules. So how do we describe the kinetics or the speed of this reaction? It turns out that there's a bunch of ways of doing it. The first way that I'm going to do it is I'm going to describe how fast this stuff appears just in general terms, because we're, we're just thinking about, we should think about this reaction as you know, the stuff on the left side of the arrow is the stuff we start with, the stuff on the right side is the stuff that gets made. So I want to describe how fast does the stuff on the right side get made. And just in general terms, it would be the concentration, that's what those square brackets mean, the concentration of NO at the end, that's what final means, minus the concentration of NO at the beginning, so that is delta concentration of NO. That means how much the concentration changed. And then we divide by what the time was at the end minus what the time was at the beginning, which is just the change in time. This is just a general way of describing the speed of this reaction. If we wanted to describe the speed of this chemical reaction, what we could do is we could figure out how fast the concentration of NO is changing, divided by how much time it takes to make that change. And that's just a general idea behind the, the speed or the kinetics of that reaction. So that's summarized here, maybe a little prettier than the way I drew it, but remember the square brackets mean concentration, the deltas mean change. And since we're dividing by time, this is going to be a rate. I don't have to describe the reaction this way though. That's what this or is here for. I could describe it in a different way. So let me just back up and point out what we did. What we did is we described the speed of this reaction based on how fast the, um, the concentration of NO is changing. We could, uh, in another situation, we could do uh, something different, but this would also describe the speed of the reaction. We could describe how fast the N2 is disappearing, because we're thinking about starting a reaction with a bunch of N2 and a bunch of O2 and seeing how fast it converts into this stuff over here. So we could do it a bunch of different ways. We could say, uh, I want to describe how fast the reaction is based on how fast this stuff is accumulating. But I could also describe the speed of the reaction based on how fast this stuff over here is disappearing. So we could do that as well. And the way that I would describe it the speed of the reaction, if I wanted to describe the, the speed of the reaction using how fast N2 is disappearing, is I'd have this delta, and I'd say how much does the concentration of N2 change, so that's uh, 
concentration of N2 final minus concentration of N2 initial divided by the time it was when we stopped which is time final minus time initial and this is just another way of describing a, a way of describing the speed of this chemical reaction and it's based on how fast the N2 concentration is dropping because we're starting with a bunch of N2s and O2s and they're disappearing they're turning into NO so if we measure how fast N2 is disappearing we're also measuring the speed of the reaction now you may have noticed something here and that is there's a negative sign here and why is there a negative sign basically the way that you should think about it is and I'll try to give you a concrete example so imagine that I start with 10 N2 molecules and 10 O2 molecules and there there are none there are no NO molecules and that's at the very beginning of my experiment so I'm going to say the amount of time that's gone by is zero seconds that's T initial and the amount of N2 that I have is 10 and I'm just making these numbers up but let's say that I wait two seconds and in that time two of these N2s and two of these O2s have disappeared so how much N2 is left well there's eight of them left because I started with 10 and this is this is T final and so if you wanted to describe the concentration or, or the change or the speed of this reaction what you would do is you'd take the final amount of N2 that would be 8 subtract away the initial amount that would be 10 and if you do that you're going to come up with a negative number because 8 minus 10 is negative 2 and then you're going to divide that by the final time which is 2 seconds minus the initial time which is 0 so it's going to be negative 2 divided by 2 and if you simplify that it's going to be negative 1 N2 molecule disappears every second so this is our rate but usually people like to have a rate that's positive and because this stuff is disappearing and I'm ending up with a negative number here the simplest way to get rid of this negative number and turn it into a positive rate is to multiply our answer by a by negative one which is why that negative sign is is there so if I do this speed which is negative times negative one then I will get a positive speed. I will get a speed of 1 plus 1 N2 molecule is disappearing every second. And so that is, that's just another way of calculating the speed of this reaction. The first way up here, we calculated how fast this stuff was accumulating. The second way is we calculated how fast the N2 was disappearing. And you can probably guess the third way. The third way is going to be very similar to the this way right here it's how fast is the O2 disappearing and it's going to be the same kind of formula for the O2 it's going to be how much does the concentration of O2 change divided by how much time went by but because this stuff is disappearing the O2 is disappearing we're going to end up with a negative number when we calculate our rate and it would be nice to have it be a positive number so I'm just going to multiply our answer by negative one and that's what that negative sign is there for. You can do any of these three ways to describe the speed of this chemical reaction and obviously you know this but we haven't put any numbers on this this is just sort of the general idea of how to do this so you could describe the speed of the reaction by telling people how fast the NO the nitric oxide is accumulating you could describe the speed of the reaction by telling people how fast the N2 is disappearing or how fast the O2 is disappearing any of those ways is is a valid correct way of describing the speed of this reaction and we can write the reaction rate or the reaction speed using any of these formulas as long as we're clear about it as long as as long as you're clear to people what how you're describing the reaction rate you can do it any of those ways one thing that one thing that I want to point out here though and this if, if you're paying very close attention you might have noticed this if I calculate the speed using this method and I get some number out and then I calculate the the same speed under the same conditions using this method over here I will not get the same speed and the reason that I won't get the same speed is if you look at this balanced equation every time one of these disappears how many nitric oxides do I make well I make two so if I calculate this speed and compare it to this speed 
this speed up here will always be twice as fast or, or twice as big as the speed down here because of this 2 here and because there's, there's a 1 implied to be in front of the n2. In other words, the speed of forming the NO is always going to be twice as fast as the speed of this stuff disappearing. And it's also going to be twice as fast, this stuff, speed of formation of NO is going to be twice as fast as the speed of disappearance of O2 for the same reason. And, and if you wanted to make them equal and you calculated all three rates, you would ha have to actually double these two rates here, which is why there's a 2 in front of them. If I actually wanted to make them equal, I would have to make this one double and this one double. And again, as long as I'm clear about what I'm doing to other people, th that's a perfectly valid thing to do to describe the rate.